Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I uh, had to redo the video. Um, for some time I've been talking to the Lord about putting this video out there, but I've been talking myself out of it and I've been trying to continue to do study videos. Um, the reason I'm redoing this video is my wife told me that people could take it the wrong way. And some people have taken it the wrong way. And I kind of did it on the spot in my grief and in my sorrow. And I had to get it out there to motivate me to do what the Lord is asking me to do. So, uh, Romans 13.8, if you want to turn there with me real quick. Romans 13.8 uh, Let's go to 7 Render therefore to all their dues Tribute to whom tribute is due Custom to whom custom Fear to whom fear Honor to whom honor Owe no man anything But to love one another For he that loveth another Hath fulfilled the law When I said about my house, and we'll get to that real quick. This isn't a Bible study. This is me explaining to you in more detail what's going on, how I'm failing the Lord, and how I'm failing my wife. Okay. First, um, I was I was debt free before I met her, and I made the mistake of getting a loan on a small car, and knowing I shouldn't have, but talk myself into it, know how you can pray yourself out of conviction and have all these excuses on trying to justify things. And then God chastened me and had my um, pressure tank break down on me. So getting the pressure tank fixed cost me $1,200 I didn't have, and I haven't used my credit card in a long time, and I put it on my credit card. And I'm estimating, I'm not doing specifics, um, the prices and then next thing I know I got family coming out and instead of saying hey I can't do this I can't afford it right now I ended up spending more money on the credit card and before you know I've got I got debt again something I strive so hard with the Lord to get out of debt and normally it'd be me and I would have to suffer and I would have to deal with it but now that my wife is involved she's not having to pay for it and what I mean by that is my sin, I always tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that when, when you get married, your sins do not reflect on you. They reflect on both of you. Yes, I will answer to the Lord for this, but um, both of us have to pay the consequences for me being in debt. So... Um, these are one of the things that has got me down and realizing that it's frustrating me and it's distracting me from the ministry. Um, praise the Lord, I was able to sell the car, get out from underneath it. <clears throat> now I'm working on the credit card. But I, the biggest thing is being debt free. Um, you want to be debt free. All right. So this is one of the things because uh, people were making out like we broke up or I broke up with her or that kind of thing, and it doesn't work that way. Uh, she's my betrothed wife. I love her. I will die for her. Um, and we'll get to the next verse real quick. But um, they learn, God puts together no man tear asunder. Um, but the whole point of the video, like I said, I was very emotional. I was in my grief and sorrow at the moment. And I apologize to the brothers and sisters in Christ out there. I apologize to my wife out there. I did not mean to give a false sense of what's going on. I'm looking at my life and realizing there's a lot of things I've got to work on and fix. And I'm realizing that um, with the move and with, with everything that's going on, it's, it's getting very stressful and weighing heavy on my spirit, on my heart, 
and when I try to do a video and I don't feel like my whole heart's behind it and my whole focus and attention's behind it, um, I feel like junk. I've made videos, the last couple videos I put out, I must have done them 15 times before I finally said, eh, oh wait, who, who cares, and I just threw it out there. That's not how I was before. Um, so one thing that I, I'm, that's eating at me and that I'm working on and I failed my wife on is not owing no man anything, okay? So God is helping me work on that, praise the Lord. Um, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.22 I already talked about this a little bit. First Thessalonians 5.22, and I got in it with uh, a couple of brothers in Christ that were defending video games, but 22, uh, abstain from all appearance of evil. I've been kicking myself hardcore and beating myself up hardcore because cause I fell back into playing some video games. And the next thing I know, I get tempted to watch a couple movies. Uh, then I get tempted to watch a couple TV shows. Um, that's what I hate about the internet. You can do anything on the internet. It's pretty much mostly evil and wicked, the internet. Um, and the temptation is out of control because it's there. All my games, <laughs> I can delete them off my computer, but they're still out there in the internet. So I've been struggling with the flesh in the past week. And if you remember the study I put out, and praise the Lord, I, it wasn't as bad as it, it could have been, and should have been, with all the distractions. But one of the responsibilities of a husband to his wife is to protect her, spiritually. And husbands out there, if you're dabbling in sin, and you're living in sin, and justifying sin, and I'm not saying I am, but if you're living by the flesh and you're struggling, or not even struggling, those of you who justify movies, video games, TV shows, drinking, uh, drugs, smoking, whatever. If you're living by the flesh and you're not repenting and forsaking of that, you can't protect your wife spiritually. Okay? When I'm falling into this, I'm worried that I can't protect my wife spiritually. I can't take care of my wife if I'm falling apart in sin. Okay? We are commanded to abstain from all appearance of evil. And I'm not talking about struggling with sin. You can struggle with sin. We're always going to struggle with sin. And you can still protect your wife spiritually. But I'm talking about the whole point of people just of men out there that are husbands that are supposed to be Bible-believing, God-fearing men will start justifying sin. You won't be able to protect your wife spiritually. If your walk with the Lord is messed up and falling apart, you cannot protect your wife spiritually. I let the Lord down and I let my wife down. Big time. Okay. So, um, staying from all appearance of evil. Okay. The stress of the move, the stress of, uh, you know, my mistakes getting in the way of everything, because moving someone from Washington down to here is not cheap. Um, there's cheap ways to do it, um, but uh, you guys already know about my situation with driving, and I'll end up having to drive all the way up there. Um, but I'm making mistakes, and it's hurting my wife and it's hurting us, it's hurting me, and it's hurting my walk with the Lord. Okay? And I know my wife's making some mistakes too, but I'm the one that's responsible for us. And I'm the one making the mistakes big time. Okay? So, staying from all appearance of evil, and I'm having, and I'm, lately I just, 
the flesh is coming up. It's like Satan is trying to destroy this marriage. It's like my flesh is trying to get in the way. It's like the lost world and some, and we'll get to this, a pro, some professing Christians are getting in the way. And it's just, uh, let's go to it. Matthew 19, 6. Matthew 19, 6. We'll go back to number five. Actually, uh, verse three. Let's go to verse three. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore, and this is the important part, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Okay. Um, there's a man that was trying to come out and sow seeds of corruption between the two of us and and I start giving into fear. I start giving into fear and temptation. I was already struggling with the flesh and uh, Mark 10 9 has the same thing, what therefore God hath joined together let no man put asunder. Notice it said no man can put, like a man can't get in the way of it. No, it says let no man put asunder. I can screw this up. I can screw it up big time and I can't turn around and say well it was just God's will. I've seen a lot of people do that and it's going through a lot of stuff it's sickening. Okay, I can't sit here and when I screw a blessing up from the Lord because I don't deserve my wife when I destroy a blessing from the Lord it's it's my fault. Oh, it's God's will. It's just God's will. No, it isn't. Okay. Let no man put asunder. Okay. I need to be able to focus on my wife and my walk with the Lord. Been getting back into reading hardcore, praying hardcore, getting work done around the house, working with my hands. Um, I realized I haven't really done anything around the property in the last week to two weeks. And it's like... I mean, we can't let man get in the way of the blessings that God has for us. Uh, we can't let man get in the way of our walk with the Lord. And you better, better, better not screw up like I did and let man get in the way of your relationship and walk with your wife. Okay. Like I said, I'm just full of screw-ups uh, lately. Just totally full of screw-ups. Um, 1 Timothy 3, I quoted this, but I didn't really go through and talk about it a lot, but 1 Timothy 3, I've not yet to do a study on it, this is a true saying, 1 Timothy 3, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work, and I do desire it. That's why it's not easy for me to do this right now, but I know it has to be done for right now. A bishop then must be blameless. Uh, I'm not blameless. Struggling with sin, yes, but I'm not blameless right now. I fell back into things that I have preached against, and I'm vehemently against it, and I fell back into it. Okay? Um, the temptation and sin, and I gave ammunition to the enemy to say, you're against video games and movies, and look, you're playing video games and movies. Two, I could blame this. The husband of one wife, and I am very blessed. I am, like I said, I screwed up, and I, I do not deserve any blessing the Lord gives me. It is a gift. It's His grace and His mercy. 
and the fact that he gave me another chance when I had blown it so much. Like I said, she's a blessing. Vigilant, okay. I can't be vigilant if I'm fall if my if I'm given to sin in the flesh, if I'm doing things I know I'm not supposed to do. Um, you realize that your vigilance drops, and that comes to do with like praying, pr not praying as often, not staying in the Word as often. What I do reflects on my wife, and I need to focus on doing what's right. And when I've been trying to focus on the ministry hardcore, I realized my, because of my seizure disorder, and it's not a justification, but my wife laughs at me because I can't do two things at once. I'll be in here doing a study or watching a study video, and I'll have a plate of food because I'll say I'm going to eat in here instead. And when it's done, I'll pick up the plate and I'm like, I got something stuck in my teeth. So I'm going to go to the, drop off the plate. And in the kitchen, and I'm going to go to the bathroom, and I'm going to brush my teeth real quick to get what's stuck in my teeth. And the next thing I know, I wind up in the bathroom with the plate in my hand, getting ready to brush my teeth. Pardon me. So there are times where it's hard for me to focus on two things at once. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just saying in general, but it's definitely... And I was like, I always laugh at myself and walk back to the kitchen and put it away. But there's times where I walk around the house and I'm thinking a Bible study or I'm thinking of my sin and the temptation, my failures, and I'm thinking of things I need to get done. And I'm walking around the house and it just looks like, especially when I'm upset at myself, it's like I'm walking aimlessly around the house and I have to stop sometimes saying, what am I supposed to be doing? What was I supposed to be doing? Because all I'm doing is wandering around the house. Um... And I can't be like that. And like I said, I just don't want to do wrong by you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't want to give you 10%. don't want to give you 50%. I don't want to give you 90%. I don't want to give you 99%. I want to give you my all. And right now, God has me, wants me to focus on my wife and my walk with the Lord and everything that's got to get done to get her here. So... Um, like I said, it's me. I'm the one that screwed up. Okay, but you can't be vigilant if you are not obeying the Lord and your walk with the Lord isn't strong. Sober, of good behavior. Okay, I'm realizing that I'm slipping up and I'm screwing up with my words, like the last video. Um, screwing up with my words and not getting my point across. Okay. Saying things that uh, could hurt. Not really meaning it, but being frustrated with myself and saying things in a way I shouldn't. Okay, it's not good behavior. Given to hospitality, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy, filthy lucre. I'm working on um, getting out of debt again. But patient. And that's one thing I am so trying to work on, and I'm failing the Lord and my wife big time. But patient, you know, waiting on the Lord, we need to wait on the Lord. Not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? And I put that verse in the comment, or in the description. What that means is, brothers in Christ, as husbands, if you're giving into sin and you're doing things you're not supposed to, getting into debt, uh, letting things into your home that you're not supposed to, your home's supposed to be a godly home and it's your responsibility. Yes, the wife is to submit herself to her husband in all things, but it's your responsibility. And when you're doing that, your house begins to fall apart. You're not ruling your own house, okay? You're letting it fall apart. You're letting um, people bring in sin to your home. Uh, you're letting your kids, giving them their way, and letting them bring sin into the home. Um, you know, you're not being a good example for your wife. Uh, not being a good example for the brothers and sisters in Christ, okay? 
I'm screwing up big time. I'm screwing up big time. And I need to focus on the Lord and I need to focus on my wife. Six, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall. Definitely don't want to be lifted up with pride. Um, and to the condemnation of the devil. Fall into the condemnation of the devil. And like I talked about earlier, uh, Satan's doing everything he can. Not Satan specifically, but his demons. My flesh is getting the better of me. And they're all trying to destroy... My, the, my ability to be used of God, to be in His ministry. And they've tried when I was just, wasn't courting my wife, wasn't betrothed, didn't have a betrothed wife, and God was overcoming it in my life. And He still can. It's not His fault that I'm doing this, it's mine. Please understand, I'm not blaming God. But I think my flesh and Satan and his demons they realize that um, maybe they can get me through my wife. And um, by screwing me up and trying to screw up uh, the blessing that God has given me. So I don't want to get prideful and think that, you know, I got God. I'm, in, I'm indestructible. You know, I'm, I, I'm bulletproof, you know. Uh, I don't want to get prideful and I started to get a little bit prideful and next thing I know I fall you know uh, pride goeth before destruction and a haunty spirit before a fall okay the haunty spirit leads to pride and then the pride's where the destruction comes in and I don't want my my relationship with my wife destroyed I don't want my marriage to her to be destroyed. I don't want this ministry, that the Lord's ministry that He's allowed me to be a part of to be destroyed. And I need to step back. I need to step back. I need to focus on some other things right now. And I'm sorry, once again, for letting the brothers and sisters of Christ down. It's up to the Lord. It'll be up to Him. And yes, it's up to me in the sense that I need to submit myself to Him completely again. And He will help me. I know I have faith in the Lord. And I've talked about this before too, about, um, gosh, about trusting the Lord, that He knows what He's doing. And when you don't trust the Lord and you try to do things your way and you try to go out and no, I can do it, Lord. I can. I, I have. It, my way's better. My way's better, and I make a big mess of things. And I just want you to know that I've let you down too. Because I was talking, and I was like, I, I failed the Lord. I failed my wife, and I've also failed the brothers and sisters in Christ out there. And please understand, this is not me putting on a show. It's not easy for me to do this. Um, but I love my wife I love the Lord and those are the two most important things to me right now and they'll always be the most two important things to me always so me stepping down from the ministry is not me quitting it's not me giving up and I know some of the enemies will probably say, well, see, see if this work be of men, it'll come to naught. But one thing people really don't talk about is, is if a man gives in to sin and temptation, he can destroy the ministry. Um, the friends, the company he keeps can destroy the ministry. His wife can destroy the ministry. Um, Brothers, other brothers and sisters in Christ, I, like I said, there's so many things that can destroy the ministry other than it not being of God. I do believe wholeheartedly that God called me into ministry and that God was using me and still is using me. I do believe that 100%. But I can easily screw it up. And I know there's some people out there that are, that the pride gets the better of them, that they're making mistakes in their flesh and um, 
Sometimes it's something as simple as you take a couple weeks off to pray, to fast if you want to. I'm trying to fast, but with my body, the medicine I gotta take and my seizure disorder, it's always hard for me to fast. Um, but uh, to spend time with your wife, if that's where the area of um, that you're struggling in, um, spend time with the Lord uh, in His Word, memorizing Scripture. Thy Word have I hidden in mine heart that I might not sin against Thee. Thy Word. Um, you know, do what needs to be done before you come back to the ministry. Um, I believe that there's times like I did in these last two videos where you're trying to force yourself to do the ministry. And there's times where you need to get focus on the Lord, focus on your family, your wife, okay? Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, just remember, uh, I'm going to put out a couple songs for you guys to look up that hopefully will be encouraging to you. I was singing them last night. And um, just basically falling before the Lord broken. Okay. Uh, wherever he leads, I'll go. It's a great song to look up. I think I've sung this before a little bit. Um, take up thy cross and follow me. Take up thy cross and follow me. Okay. And a big one that I used to listen to a lot, that when I was down, um, first time I got broken and fell down, and I believe God, really that's when I was at the point where God could use me and start changing my life and the changed life really kicked into gear. Um, some, with some people, and I almost want to believe it's with every people, yes I started to have a changed life after salvation, but there came a point where I became so broken because of my struggles with the flesh and fighting the Lord on it that God was able to really use me really get me to a point of, okay, I need to give this stuff up. I need the changed life to really happen, okay? Not just a little bit. Um, I need it to really, really happen. And um, so, and then any other time when I just felt like I was screwing up and that life was getting me down, and it was because sin is negative and sin is supposed to get you down. You're supposed to feel like junk when you sin. You are. There's no, I'm not going to sugarcoat it or anything. You're supposed to feel like junk. That's how you're able to repent. Sorrow, godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow. Godly sorrow allows you to repent. Gives you and motivates you to repent. And the fear of the chastening. But turn your eyes upon Jesus is another song I recommend, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. And that's what I need to do, okay? Look full in His wonderful face. People say, well, how do you do that? How do you do that? Prayer. How do you do that? Last night I was singing to the Lord. Um, going for walks, talking with the Lord, pouring my heart out to the Lord. I and um, when you do that, the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and His grace. And He has much grace, more grace. I don't deserve any of His grace, period. But His grace is just, when I stop and look through my life, is just abounding. I mean, I remember in the Bible, my wife likes this one. It's one of her favorite verses. Um, Let's find it real quick. John. It's going to be at the end of John. Let's see. This wasn't part of my notes. Okay, here it is. Verse, the very last chapter in John. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which of they should be written, every one. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. 
Amen. That God, Jesus did so many wonderful things, and He's still doing wonderful things in my life and in your life. But the same attitude I have is towards God's grace to me and God's mercy. If I had to write down every time God showed grace and mercy to me, uh, not all the books in the world could contain it. That's how great His mercy is and how great His grace is. But I don't want to drag this on too long. I'll be stepping down to focus on two, the things that are, are more important right now. My walk with the Lord and my wife. I'll be focused on And I'm not going to let man come between my walk with the Lord and me and my wife. Okay. And I am going to, like I said, here and there, I'll probably try to still get out more Bible by the ocean side um, and worship by the ocean side. But it'll probably be a while before I can pick back up in the ministry where I left off. And uh, I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we're all part of the ministry of reconciliation no matter what's going on in our life. Make sure you're still preaching the gospel. Uh, make sure, make sure that you're, like I said, I'm focusing on my walk with the Lord because I, I've hurt my testimony and um, I'm confessing my faults to the brethren. But make sure you're preaching the gospel, you're preaching righteousness, okay, that leads to repentance, that you're preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? the real Jesus Christ, you know, the one of the Godhead, that you're preaching confession, confessing both in prayer to the Lord. Why does God want you to do that? Well, in the Bible it says that, so you're not, to show that you're not ashamed of the gospel. You're to confess your sin and repentance and your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and prayer to show that you are not ashamed. And then you call upon the name of the Lord to save you. And I've told people in videos before that time and time again, people are coming up to, the, to Jesus and they're missing an arm. They've got uh, leprosy. They're blind. Uh, who knows what other, like just, they're coming to Jesus wanting to be healed. And Jesus looks at them and says, what is it that you want me to do? I mean, it's right there in front of him. He's come to him with one arm. He's got leprosy. His whole body's just deteriorated. And it's got white and stuff. And it's just, he's in such pain. Uh, boils, uh, blind, maimed. That's missing an arm. And they come up to him and he's like, he looks at him and goes, and he's in the process of healing people. And he looks at him and goes, what is it that you want me to do? Well, come on, Jesus, uh, isn't it obvious? And that's how these eat faith alone people are. Uh, no, he made him ask them that I may see, Lord, I want to see. I want to be healed. I want to see. When you ask God to save you at the end, that's you saying, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve it at all. Lord, please save me. When you refuse to ask God to save you, then you're saying you've earned it. And that's what these faith alone crowd people are. I didn't mean to get into that, but make sure you're still preaching the true gospel and you're standing for God's word. Stay in the word, stay in prayer, continue to lift and encourage one another up, the brothers and sisters in Christ. And in these last days, it's getting tougher and tougher. People are falling away. Uh, my wife pointed out how this world has just gotten so wicked and it's coming down on us so hard, so hard. And trying to get us to just fall apart, uh, getting us to turn against God, um, getting us to turn against His perfect written word, uh, turn against the true gospel, turn against the free time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security, dispensational teaching, the Bible version issue, the King James Bible. The world's coming down hard on us, and it's only getting harder and harder, brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to be encouraging one another. We need it. I need it. I know I'm putting all this stuff out there to encourage you, but you guys, with the few testimonies that people have sent me, um, you guys encourage me. You guys encourage me a lot. Um, the comments uh, let me know that, you know, you too are struggling with sin. God's helping you here and there. God's blessed you here and there. God's answered your prayers. 
I can't remember. I gotta go back and say thank you. I can't remember if I put that out there, but the car did sell. Thank you, Lord. And I'm getting my wife and I out of debt. And uh, so, uh, just we're all part of the ministry of reconciliation. And stay in the Word, stay in prayers, and start memorizing some hymns. Start, start making cue cards, put verses on them that mean a lot to you. Uh, my biggest thing to start out with that'll help you, that's, I don't know if I've said it exactly this way, is instruction and righteousness. Put down verses that are instruction and righteousness, like some of the verses I just quoted, abstain from all appearance of evil. Owe no man anything. And... That way when you memorize these, when the temptation comes in, you can uh, fight it. Okay. So I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. The prayer and testimony uh, email is still there and available. Because um, some people were asking me to get a hold of me. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I will not give out personal information. People are asking for my phone number. And people, I just, I won't do that. I'll do it to people I know who are saved, or that are brothers and sisters in Christ that I've talked to for a good while before I've given them anything. Okay? But I will not just give out my personal information. Okay? It's not just me I have to protect now, it's also my wife I have to protect. So um, I won't be doing that, but it's there for those who um, have testimonies to help lift my spirits up that just want to talk about the Word of God, encouragement. I thank you all so much for the encouragement, the comments that I get. So that's what's going on. I'm sorry about doing that quick video in the middle of my sorrow. It's kind of like, kind of like when you do something out of anger. You end up regretting how you did it. Granted, your heart was still part of it, but you, you regret how you did it, how you said it. And, you know, uh, a great example, I had the hatchet, and in the backyard there were these huge flower bushes that were beautiful, but my backyard is so small, because ha it has a big water tank in it, and I'm on the hillside, and those bushes took up half the yard, if not maybe a little bit more. So I was back there chopping away, and I was chopping at it and, and everything, getting at the bottom part, and I was like... It wasn't coming off and I got so mad so I grabbed that and I just wham and for some reason God made that tree like a rubber band or like a, a rubber ball or rubber and that thing bounced off and it hit my shin and I was lucky that the flat side that you use for hammering stakes in because like a camping hatchet and you had this side and the flat side is what hit me on the shin once again God's grace and mercy but when you do things when you're in, in much sorrow and pain and such anger um, regardless I needed to take time to be with the Lord all evening if I did I would have probably came out with a video like I did just now that's better um, more focused and everything and I made the last video like I said on the spot and in the middle of my sorrow and grief of me screwing up because I had screwed up Thank you for watching, and grace and peace from God our Father be with you, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, and my love for you in Jesus Christ be with you, always. Thank you for watching.